We are back on Sportsline. Our phone lines are open at 737-7767. Jay's been waiting for a while now, and Jay will start us off tonight here on Sportsline. Jay, thanks for calling in. Hey, Steve. I just I was going to talk about something else, but you done got me fired up about this guy here. Um, I think a lot has to do with the way kids are today. It, you know, back when in the night. Late 80s and 90s when I played, you know, we didn't have all the fancy music and the fancy locker rooms and all that. But I think the kids today, you know, they're out for themselves. They're not out to be the team player or out to help a team. You know, some of these smaller schools have some of the best football coaches in America that teach you not only about football but about life. And I think the problem is that they've gotten spoiled and they're in it for themselves and not for the rest of the team. I wonder what your thoughts were. Yeah, Jay, I think that's a good point. I think certainly the era has changed now where you see all the opportunities out there for star athletes like a Johnny Manziel or, or, or some of these guys that get such big publicity. And clearly, if there was a way that they could capitalize on that publicity, it could be big dollars. And I think not just do the players see that, but they have people in their corner. They've got friends from home. They've got parents. They've got coaches they've got AAU coaches people like that who are all whispering something in their ear and making them think something other than what you talked about and that's playing a sport being a student athlete being a part of a university being a part of a team I think that is an issue for sure I think there also is an issue that look college athletics has gotten bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger in terms of how much money it brings in and yet as everyone else is getting these massive salaries the players aren't getting that much more the schools have figured out a way as we talked about earlier to bury their profits in smoothie machines and barber shops in the locker room and things like that as opposed to really disclosing what they're making where maybe someone might say, you know what, when you're making that much money, maybe somebody else should be getting something off of this. Or when you're making that much money, maybe you're not like a charitable institution that shouldn't be paying taxes, as all athletic departments have that tax-exempt status through universities. They kind of buffer the books that way. So there's a lot of questions out there of how it comes through for sure I think it's fair that these guys these players get something get more get the full cost of attendance as people are talking about heck give them something that they can earn I, and I don't know what that is I haven't studied it completely what the best opportunity is there because there are some things here if you pay them a salary all of a sudden, that's taxable, right? So do these athletes or these former athletes that are fighting for this for players, do they really want to be taxed? Do they want a salary that some of that they then have to pay directly back out to Uncle Sam? I don't know if they've even thought about that. There are a lot of questions in what you would implement and then once it's implemented, what the effect of that would be. Some people have suggested you set a flat rate for what the cost of attendance to college is, no matter what the college is, whether that's Alabama or Harvard or Podunk JCC, and then you pay a flat rate to them say $50,000 a year to which they will have to pay taxes they'll have to pay their own tuition to go to school and then whatever is left over they pocket and they can do what they want to they can spend it on a car they can invest it they can do whatever they want I don't know if that makes anybody happy. I don't know if that makes the players happy here. One of the big suits that is sort of causing all of this discussion is the Ed O'Bannon lawsuit. Ed O'Bannon signed up to be a player at UCLA. 
went through the whole process, played at UCLA, won a national championship, had, by all accounts, a great experience, went on to the NBA and did not have the type of career he wanted. I don't believe Ed O'Bannon has graduated from UCLA. And now he's sort of looking at his life and thinking, man, I won a national championship. I made UCLA a lot of money. Shouldn't I deserve more than what I already have? And so that is where this lawsuit comes from. And it, it, not to pick on Ed O'Bannon, because if it wasn't him, it would be someone else at this point. This is the era we are now in. But it's not a current athlete. It's not one of these guys who's walking out of the locker room or walking out of his 100,000 square foot weight room, picking up his handcrafted smoothie on the way to his barber appointment to then he's going to take the next ride around the hallway to a state-of-the-art tutoring facility where they're going to make sure that he passes all of his classes for then him to go back to you know the giant team meeting room where they're going to watch a movie and then study a little more film and those sort of things those guys aren't complaining right now from what I've heard pretty much on any campus in America they're certainly going to take any extra benefits you throw their way but when you talk to college athletes college athletes understand for the most part they have a pretty good deal right now and so that's the interesting thing here is what effect does an old guy like Ed O'Bannon or, or one of these guys who's out of school alleging he should have gotten more in it have on the current crop? How much does the current crop fight for that as well? And then what are the unintended consequences like we talked about earlier? If you make these changes, if you pour that money in to football or men's basketball, does that then hurt the Olympic sports? Does Bob Bowles be addressed today? And what about the women's side? Because Bowlesby said, look, Title IX's not disappearing here. If you do it for the men, you're going to have to do it for the women. So does that mean if you're not paying your football and men's basketball players, you're definitely paying your women's basketball players? Does this extend to all scholarships on campus? See, there's a lot of questions out there, and it is a tricky issue. And it's one that you could debate over and over and over again. But as we said earlier, there's more questions than answers at this point. We've got to take a break. We will come back. More of your phone calls, more football discussion as well. Stay with us. You're watching Sportsline on News Channel 5+. Plus.